All right, so we are in story number 118, uh, The Coming of Elijah. And I think <coughs> one of the things that we're going to see here, good morning, in this, uh, in this story is that um, the, the understanding of, of Scripture of the day when Jesus was, was walking had a lot of similarities to understanding of Scripture today. People had their concepts and their philosophies and their ways of, of how they think and they, they built their, uh, a lot of times even their, their fellowships and who they would be with and who they wouldn't be with based on some of the, uh, the, the beliefs that they had. Um, and a lot of the information that they had was not like completely wrong, but it wasn't probably, proper, properly understood. And I think in a, in a big way, that's kind of what we got going on today in our world. The, the understanding and, the, and the, the, the hearing of the word, we're not, we don't lack from that. We have that. The, 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 the quotes of scripture happen all the time. But how do we relate and understand those? Um, sometimes can vary. But when we look at this situation with, with uh, Elijah, and um, there seemed to be some confusion with the apostles and what they were trying to say. And not only confusion, but here's the interesting point. There's some mystery to it. And that's the part that oftentimes we don't put in the equation. We, we put it in simple forms. It, it, it has to either be or it isn't. And we don't see that from God the, the opportunity could be, it could be neither or it could be both. And God works in that realm uh, where it doesn't have to always be one or the other. It can be a, a, a variety of different things that only God in his wisdom can actually produce. So when we look at this story, we want to keep that in mind um, because this is one of those things that confused uh, uh, the disciples and they tried to get an understanding. But let's take a listen to this. It's a very short story, uh, story 118. Let's take a listen. Story 118. The coming of Elijah. And the disciples asked him, saying, Why is it that the scribes say that Elijah must come first? But he answered and said to them, Elijah indeed comes first, and will restore all things. But how has it been written concerning the Son of Man, that he suffers much, and be made as nothing? But I say to you, that Elijah has indeed come already, and they did not know him, they did to him whatever they wished, just as it is written of him. So also the Son of Man is going to suffer from them. Then the disciples understood that he spoke to them concerning John the Baptist. Alright, so here's a, here's a very uh, short uh, story, but it basically brings forth an understanding that the disciples are trying to put things together. But remember when Jesus told them, we, we studied that a couple of stories ago, where he told them, beware of the, uh, the, the, uh, the doctrine, or he called it the leaven of the scribes and the Pharisees. And then, the, Pharisees, and then the, the apostles got confused and they thought he was talking about what? Bread. And he said, no, I'm telling you to beware of the what? The doctrine or the teaching of the scribes and the Pharisees. And the reason why he did that was because they, they talk and teach from a, a dogmatic standpoint, this is how it had to be, there was no variable to it, and we got the full understanding. When in reality, they didn't. They understood it, and they agreed with one another. And sometimes when you get you know, a bunch of people that always agree together, they feel like, well, we must be right, because we all agree. But that, does, that doesn't always have to be true. You can have a lot of people to agree with something that still don't make it true. A whole lot of people thought that Hillary was going to win the election. <laughs> that didn't make it true. Mm -hmm. So there's, there's things that we have to make sure that we lean on the Lord for. 
and ask God for, for wisdom and understanding because certain things may seem a certain way, but that don't mean that they're, that, that's how they're going to be. Amen. So one of the things that they had was that, that they, they understood. It says, and the disciples asked him, saying, why is it uh, that the scribes say that Elijah must come first? Now, why are they asking this question? Good morning. Good morning. They, they're asking this question for a couple of reasons. Number one, good morning. They're asking this question because they're saying, now wait a minute, Jesus, if you are the Messiah, where is the, uh, the your, 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 your forerunner Elijah? I mean, if, if you're, the, if you're the, the Messiah to come, the scribes have been teaching for ages that before the Messiah comes, 118, before the Messiah comes, that, that Elijah would come first. And so they're saying, well, it seems as though what we've been, once again, taught throughout all of our uh, uh, theological education, our spiritual education, doesn't seem to, to line up. And, uh, and, they go, uh, and he said, but he answered and said unto them, Elijah indeed comes first. So what he's telling them is that statement that you read and that uh, uh, portion of scripture comes from the, um, um, the book of Micah talking about Elijah uh, must first come. It says uh, Elijah indeed first come and will restore all things. So he's going to come first and he's going to do so. Jesus is letting them know that that statement that you're saying is correct. Now, okay, so then what's the problem there? The problem is, well, Jesus, if that's true, then where is Elijah? If you're the Messiah, where was he? How come he's not here? So Jesus goes on. But how has it been written concerning the Son of Man? All right, he's saying, now listen, this is also, it has been written, because you're talking about the Son of Man coming to restore the kingdom, right? And before the Son of Man comes to restore the kingdom, Elijah must come. But remember, it is also written of the Son of Man, what? That he suffer much. See, that part you overlook. You don't want to apply that to your understanding of Scripture. When you were, uh, do, you, do you ever remember when you, you know, go, go to a Bible bookstore and you look at the, 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 the books? And sometimes you would see these books called The Promises of God. And you open up and has all these, these promises. And they're all scripture. And they're all good promises. All right? And sometimes they even had the little thing, like the little loaf of bread. had the little, the, the little cards you pull out. You'd read the promise. And did you ever read, pull out one and said, you must suffer persecution? No. They, they don't put that in the, in the promise book. <laughs> they're not going to put that one in there. You know, they, they, they're not going to put in there, if, if they hate me, they're going to hate you too. Mm -hmm. You don't read that one. Mm -hmm. that, ain't there. that book ain't going to sell too well, is it? Mm -hmm. So, But are those promises? Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> Just as much as uh, you know, action you shall receive and, 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 and believe. Endorse. All those promises. That one there is a promise too. And so what Jesus is pointing out to them, you guys have been reading the promises about the Messiah, and y'all been reading how he's going to come and conquer, how he's going to take over, how he's going to be. But you forgot about how the scripture also says that the Son of Man, that he will suffer much. Why do you suppose the knowing, already knowing that there are the promises that are altogether beautiful, and like you just said, the ones that promise you're also going to suffer hate, why do you suppose them knowing that, pre-knowing that, deliberately leave that part out? Well, I would say it's two reasons. <laughs> Number one, if you write in the book, you write it to do what? Get to sell. Mm -hmm. So you, it ain't going to sell if I tell them that. So you got a, you got a monetary aspect. Mm -hmm. uh, the other part of it is a deception and a, a portion of trying to uh, produce a following and a... And a, and a, and a a click of thinking that is super positive, make people feel good, and all that kind of stuff. But it's still not true. And so, you know, those are the things that pop in my mind. Uh, that, that, make, that makes that writer that you know, that hypocritical. Very much so. Because the writer knows, you know, that 
your promises include both the positive and the negative aspect. And it seems to me that writer would fear of man and what he has to say more so than fearing God who says, tell the people the truth because they need to know. Exactly. But like he said, what are they writing for? They want to make money and right. they want to produce and a then following. what does the Bible say? Every man is right in his own book. Yeah. So, well, then you're absolutely right. That, that makes the writer just as bad exactly. as the people he's trying to write to. Or worse. Worse. Right? And he's accountable. Right. And he's accountable. And then he turns around and tells us to be what? Beware of wolf. And what? Okay. So we that know the word, then we should stick to the word. Absolutely. That's right. But as there you are so many people out there who don't know, you know, all over the world, they, you know, they, they don't because know as much as we know. So they're trapped. They they end up falling into the trap. You don't want to, you don't want to study. Most people want to read the Bible, but they don't want to study it. The Bible says study to show you something cool. So when you study something, you get into what? Understanding. Right. But even those that, that try to stand up and say, well, I didn't have an opportunity or there was no Bible in my town or in my school, my school or in my country. Uh, remember, uh, in the book of Romans, <coughs> Paul took care of that through the Spirit of God. He said, uh, he said, those that did not have a law are a law unto themselves. So how you judge a man? You know, like if I tell my son, don't bite your fingernails. But then I bite my fingernails all day long. All right. So then what does that make me? So then God's going to take the law that I know. This is what you've been telling people your whole life. Look at what you've been telling people. You've been telling people about this, telling people this. Now, let's take what you say. And we're going to judge you on your own words. And you're still what? Guilty. So there is no, no one's going to be able to, <laughs> to, to slither out. There's no... You know, when you read the when you read the, the the legal ease of the law, they have what's called uh, what's that phrase they use? It's a uh, loophole in the law. There's no loopholes in God. There is none, uh, and so we have to always keep that in mind. And so, as you can see here, that whole aspect of building on the positive aspects of everything and not really bringing in the fullness it's been going on and it's going on even back in Christ's time because the scribes taught that Elijah must come and then Jesus is pointing out yes you, you are correct but you also are missing the fact that, that when the Messiah comes he's also coming to suffer and then he says and uh, uh, be made as nothing so you're, you're looking as I'm coming to become powerful and rude but I'm going to be looked upon as nothing that's how they're going to see me all right. So he's pointing out you're missing the aspect that John the Baptist was Elijah because you don't see the duality. I'm going to take over. I'm going to be the ruler. I am God of gods, the Lord of lords. But I'm also I have to come as man because I have to bring you in. Thank you, Lord. And so that's the beauty of it. Uh, we get a chance to be what born again. Amen. And. And when we're born again, we become sons of who? God. Sons of God. Mm -hmm. Children of God. Mm -hmm. If Adam had never sinned, and he never fell, and he had children, and the world was going on even unto today, we would be sons of Adam. And we would be, we would be born in, in innocence, and we would be innocent like how Adam was. All right? Without sin, that innocent. Not knowing what? good or evil. That's not what happened. So then Adam got tricked and now we're born in what? In sin and shaped in iniquity. Just like who? The devil. All right. Now the thing about Adam's situation was that if you if we in that state that Adam was in it wasn't permanent. He, he had an opportunity to either stay there or to what? Or to fall into another, another state. When we're born in sin, you're born in sin, shaped iniquity, not because you chose it, that's just how you were born, but you do have an opportunity to do what? To change. Just like Adam had an opportunity to change. The beauty of it is once you're born of God, you are eternally a creation 
and a child of God. There's no one that's going to enter into, into eternity worried about, well, I wonder if I'm going to have an opportunity to sin. Or want, because sin will be then what? Completely removed. So it's a more permanent state. So in a sense, what, when you think of all that's happened, it turned, as it turned out, we're going to be in a better state than how Adam was when he was first created. So see, and I'm, and say, why are you saying? I'm trying to show you this that this wasn't a this wasn't a a, 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 a fix up job. God wasn't like, oh boy, I better fix this up. I done made a mess here. I don't let the devil come in and Adam. He wasn't confused. Amen. Yes. What you're talking about is straight from the Bible. And every time I just keep smiling and shaking my head because I can acknowledge it. What you said, I'm doing a, a, an article about that right now for my congregation. And I was looking at scripture says the first man, Adam, was made a natural man. The second man, Adam, which is the last Adam, the last days, is the spiritual man. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's right. And it's a permanent one. Mm -hmm. It's unchangeable. And that's the beauty of it. And so, but all of that has to be brought into awareness. And therefore, when you read the whole, then you can understand. And that's what Jesus is pointing out. The, the reason why the, the scribes are teaching something that's incomplete is because they're only looking at the benefit, the, the, the wonder, the, 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 the glory portion. And not looking at the suffering, not looking at the, the indignation, not looking at the, the struggle. That goes with this written in scripture. We they skip right on by that. They just go past those scriptures and don't even read it. So he goes on and says, "But I say unto you, Elijah indeed comes, uh, come already, and he did not, and they did not know him. So he indeed came already, and they did not know him. Why? Because you you're not going to see anything when you're not looking for it. They're not looking for." Uh, uh, Jesus to come as a suffering say, uh, uh, servant. And they did not, and they did uh, to him whatever they wished. Just as it is written of him. So what is he saying? He's saying this is actually what? Written. If you were to read it, you would what? See it. Yeah, well, if you if you uh, elaborate on the scripture properly and tell people when the Messiah is coming, he's coming to both suffer and to reign. Now, if you tell them that, then they can look for that. But if you tell them you're only going to reign, you're only going to have glory, which is what those promise books tell you. You only go. You can just stand before God and just say say whatever you want, and God's going. Well, when you build people's hopes that that's what Christianity is, mm -hmm. when they step into it, they miss it. They don't get the reality of what it actually can be, and you don't develop the strength. You don't develop the character. You don't. You don't know how to go through the struggle because you've been told that you're not supposed to struggle. You don't know how to go through all that, and you're not prepared for it, and then you're bewildered, and then people fall by the wayside. See, uh, but then you also have a lot of people that are just there for that. Keeping in mind, while Jesus is talking, there is one person there that has the, the, the name of a follower of Jesus that has the name in vain. Who was that person? Judas. Judas is following him. Judas is doing what the other disciples are doing. But Judas has the name what? in vain because he's not true. His heart has not been transformed. They went out and cast out this, this, all kinds of stuff. And Judas was with them. But remember, Jesus said, Many will say unto me, Lord, have we not cast out demons? And have we not prophesied in thy name? And done all these wonderful what, works in thy name? And he will say unto me, unto them, Depart from you, me, you worker of iniquity. I never knew you. Mm. So that's why, even at the state that we are, Judas does not know who Jesus is in this sense. He does not believe. He's looking for that, that rain. What can I get out of it? How can I be made 
wonderful. And he's already trying to get the advantage because as the scripture is going to tell us in a little bit, he's also doing what? He's stealing. He's taking the money. So you got you to gotta be able to recognize that Jesus is here for both the, 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 the glory as well as the suffering. And then you will be able. But if you're only trying to focus on one thing, you don't get the complete picture. And you may not truly know him in the pardon of your sins. All right. So it goes on and it says, uh, so also the son of man is going to suffer of them. Now, when it says that uh, they did to him what they, uh, what they wanted to do to him, that means they did what to to. to uh, to the forerunner who they found out now is John the Baptist. They did what to him? They killed him. Right? Remember John the Baptist was put to death because he prophesied about the, the, the coming Messiah mm -hmm. and he also told the government who was Herod that the person that you're with you, you have taken your brother's wife and you brought her in as your queen. And John said that's wrong. It's, it's wrong to do. You shouldn't have done that. And she got upset and had him put to death when the daughter danced. Right? I was about ready to get on a soapbox, but I'm going to go on. I'm going to leave that alone. Because, you know, a whole lot of people just say they, they, they believe in certain things and believe in freedom of speech. And, all right, let me just go because I'll, I'll be able to say something. <laughs> All right. Um, it says, so the Son of Man also will suffer. So what is he saying? He's saying that just how John the Baptist was what, put to death, so will I be put to death. All right. It says, then the disciples understood that he spoke to them concerning John the Baptist. So Jesus is 100% fulfilling. It says when the, when the Messiah comes, it must come first the forerunner, and that forerunner must be Elijah. And what he is saying is that John the Baptist came in the spirit of who? Of, of Elijah. And they didn't know him. They didn't know it. So therefore, Jesus... And so that's why I say, well, was John the Baptist Elijah? No. No. But what was John the Baptist the, the, uh, the uh, fulfillment of the scripture of Elijah coming during Jesus' first advent? Yes. So this is where you have to be able to see things not from a humanistic standpoint where things have to be black or white, you know, on or off, past or present. You know, um, it, 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 it is in the realm of God where things have a more dynamic aspect of how things actually can be looked upon. All right. So you can see that the, that whole problem rises mainly because of the un, un, of the inability to understand a specific portion of scripture and leaving out scriptures that should not have been left out. All right. Let's move on to our next portion here. Uh, the boy possessed by a spirit. Let's take a listen to that. This is story 119. Story 119, the boy possessed by a spirit. And it came to pass the next day, they came down from the mountain, and coming toward the disciples, they saw a great crowd about them, and scribes conversing with them. And immediately, when coming to the crowd, the entire crowd saw him, and they were amazed. And running, they met together with him, and greeted him. And he asked the scribes, what are you discussing with them? And behold, one out of the crowd came up to him, falling on his knees to him, and cried out, saying to him, Lord, teacher, I brought my son to you. I beg you to look at my son. Have mercy on my son, for he is the only one born to me. For he is a lunatic, and he is suffering evil, having a dumb spirit. And behold, whenever the spirit seizes him, it throws him to the ground, he suddenly screams, and it convulses him with foaming at the mouth, and grinds his teeth, and withers, and crushing him, it leaves him with difficulty, and also many times it throws him, and he falls into the fire, and many times into the water, that it might destroy him. And I brought him to your disciples, and I begged your disciples that they should cast it out, 
and they were not strong, and they were not able to cure him. But Jesus answered and said, O oh, unbelieving and perverted generation, how long will I be with you? How long will I tolerate you? Bring him here to me. And they brought the boy to him. Yet still approaching him, and seeing him, immediately the demon spirit burst upon him and convulsed him, and falling on the ground he rolled, foaming at the mouth. And he questioned his father, How long a time has it been that this has happened to him? And he said, From his being a little boy, But if you are able, help us, have compassion on us. And Jesus said to him, If you are able to believe, all things are possible to the one who believes. And immediately crying, the father of the child said, I believe. Help my unbelief. And seeing that a crowd ran together, Jesus rebuked the unclean spirit, saying to it, Dumb and deaf spirit, I charge you, come out of him, and you will not enter into him again. And with crying, and much convulsing, Jesus rebuked it, and the demon came out of him. And he became as if dead, so that many said that he died. But holding his hand, Jesus raised him, and he stood up, and he healed the boy, and gave him back to his father. And the boy was cured from that hour. And all were amazed at the greatness of God. And while all were wondering at all things which Jesus did, and entering into a house, his disciples came to Jesus and inquired of him privately, and said, Why were we not able to cast it out? And he said to them, Because of your little faith. For truly I say to you, if you have faith as a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, Move from here to there, and it will move, and nothing will be impossible to you. But this kind is not able to come out except in prayer and fasting. All right. This story is one of those those stories that, uh, you know, it's like I look at the clock and I go, okay, we got about a half hour. Yeah, yeah. And you could, it's got you, too much information. You could spend, I could spend three sessions on this, but I'm going to try to, I'm going to try to go through this. Because we're going to see stuff like this again and I can do some more elaborating on it. But I do want you to get a, 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 a feel for this. Um, now, keeping in mind the conditions here. Remember, Jesus previously had took Peter, James, and John up to the, what? The mountain. That's where they got to see who? Moses and Elijah standing with Jesus. And Jesus, and the, and Jesus standing in, 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 his, in his glory. He, they were glorified, right? Mm -hmm. All right, so you keep that in mind. And then, um, and, uh, and dealing with trying to understand things, they're talking to Jesus about, well, how come, you know, if you're the Messiah, how come uh, John the Baptist, I mean, how come Elijah has not yet come? He says, well, Elijah has come. So uh, we see a couple of things here, because even when he was on the Mount of Transfiguration, Peter said, let us make, what, three tabernacles, one for Jesus, one for Moses, one for Elijah. And then, and then the father spoke through the cloud and said, this is my beloved son, hear ye him. Peter didn't know what to do. And, and then we see another situation here where, there's, where the scripture is being used, but the fullness of it is not. Now you see, well, you, you look at this, and, and the one thing I do believe is the Bible is, is written by, by the Spirit of God. Did man pen it? Yes. But the Spirit of God gave us the inspiration. And so it all leads to, if you follow the progression, it will, it will guide you to the, to the understanding of what's said next. So as we look at this, this story, <clears throat> we see here, it says, And it came to pass on the next day, as they came down from the mountain. The mountain where? When they were, where Jesus was transfigured. And coming towards the disciples. Who? The remaining disciples. Who, who was already with Jesus was Peter, James, and John. The remaining disciples were down at the base of the mountain, so to speak. They saw a great crowd. So as they're coming down, they're looking and it's like, wow, there's a whole lot more people here than when it was when we went up. And we talked about the crowd. The crowd is there for what? All kinds of things. All right. So let's keep going. Uh, there was a great crowd about them. 
uh, and scribes conversing, conversing with him. So now the scribes. Now he just talked about, uh, the disciples just talked about why do the scribes say that Elijah must come. So here's, and Jesus told them, well, the scribes don't look at the full picture. They only teach the things. So now we come down, and guess who's talking with, you know, amongst this great crowd? The who? The scribes. All right. These people that, that look at things kind of like not complete. They have scripture, but they don't use all of it. Conversing with them. And immediately when coming to the crowd uh, and entering the crowd, saw him, the, uh, the entire crowd rather saw him, uh, they were amazed and running. Uh, they met together with him, greeting him. And he asked them, uh, the scribes, what are you discussing with them? So he said, well, you know, what's going on? What are you guys talking about? Okay. And behold, one out of the crowd came up to him, falling on his knees to him, and cried out, saying to him, Lord. All right. Right off the bat, we see a situation where something's going on. <coughs> and then this individual works his way out of the crowd, falls on his knees, and calls Jesus who? Lord. Lord. That represents an aspect of already having a, a understanding. Look, I might not, I, I'm coming to you because I need something. If I knew how to handle this situation myself, it would be handled. I'm coming to you because I do not know what to do. Not only, uh, and we're going to see here, not only is he coming to him, but he had came also first to his who? To his disciples, which we're going to see in just a bit. But the fact that he calls him Lord recognizes that I'm willing to do whatever you say. That's what Lord means. When you're saying Lord to, to the Lord Jesus, you're saying to him, whatever you say, I'm going to do it. Jesus, he, he, he just can't be uh, your pal. Although he will be your friend. Amen. But he's also, he has to be your what? Your Lord. And then he also says, teacher. Meaning, you, you go to a teacher to help you to get what? Knowledge. Knowledge. Understanding. Clarity. So he calls him Lord. He calls him teacher. And then he explains. I brought my son to you. And I beg you to look at my son. Have mercy upon my son. For he is the only born to me. So he's saying, this is my son, my only son. Right? For he is a what? A lunatic. In other words, he's being possessed. And, and, uh, and he is suffering evil, having a dumb spirit. So he has, he, he has a son who is demon-possessed, who uh, has been acting uh, in a... Uh, uh, a way that is described as a lunatic meaning that he's trying to do not only harm to others but harm to himself uh, and he has a dumb spirit meaning he can't be reasoned with you can't converse with him you can't conversate with him you can't try to talk you ever meet some people that you, no matter, it don't matter you, you start talking to them and they get the glassy eyed look and you just go like, right. you, you, you can't you, you just gotta pray and what Jesus is going to say, these kind, you, you, can't, you, you can't reason these people out. See, Jesus is talking to his disciples. He, he can explain things to them. He can show things to them, as well as pray. There's some people that you can't explain anything to them. The only thing you can do is pray. And you'll find that uh, uh, a lot in, in today's society as well. And uh, I'm moving on. I know I'm moving kind of fast here, but I, I'm, I'm trying to connect these. And behold, whenever the spirit seizes him, so he's now given a description, all right, he's, uh, of why he calls him a, a, uh, a, an evil spirit and, spirit and a lunatic and a dumb spirit. It throws him to the ground, and he is suddenly screams, and it convulses him. So, you know, it, it, it really batters the body up with the foaming at the mouth, and the grinding of his teeth, uh, and with a uh, and, and, and withers and crushes him and leaves him with difficulty 
Right? So, like the boy, you know, the boy's going through some stuff. I and mean, when you see something like that, I mean, you know, I think Hollywood tries to portray stuff like that. When you see it on some of these movies and whatnot. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, and you see a lot of that stuff going on. But uh, uh, let me tell you, you don't, you don't want to be dealing with this uh, from a, a standpoint of a, of a ignorant or novice individual. But look at what he says. He says, and also many times it throws him into the, uh, and he falls into the fire. So it's throwing him into the fire. Right? The devil comes not but for to what? Steal, kill, and destroy. That's what this, this demon is trying to do. And many times into the water. Right? So it's trying to also drown him. That it may destroy him. And I brought him to your disciples. Right? And I begged your disciples that they should cast it out. And they were not strong. So now the man is looking at this situation and he's saying, listen, he just described the harbor show. This man has just described, uh, uh, can you imagine having to deal with this on a daily basis? I basically deal with this with my son. I basically really deals with this, mm -hmm. and um, well, in a situation like that, this is where you're gonna find your answer. Scriptures yeah. are written; yeah. they're written for a reason. This there is a reason why this story is in scripture, mm -hmm. and it's there for you to get the yeah, I'm get comprehension, the understanding. But you gotta look at this in the right. sense that. Who could fix this? The disciples couldn't fix it. The, the man himself. See, the father. Sometimes we think, well, I'm the father, I'm the mother, I'm going to fix this. And sometimes that is not the answer either. Sometimes you got to do what? Give it to Jesus. You got to let the Lord fix it. This is what I basically want to, you know, like I said, I'm going to do and um, because I have him on the prayer list mm -hmm. of everything, okay. you know, and it's like, this is, this, this is what basically I'm, this I'm is, doing. This is what you're going to have to do. So this is, a, this is a story you need to make sure you underline and highlight and read it on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. And it says, um, but, but he said he, he was asking the disciples. And sometimes you go to you go to other Christians. Yes. You know, and you, you all, but you just gotta. Sometimes he says, well, "I brought them to your disciples, and they were not strong enough, and they were not able to cure him." But Jesus answered and said, "O oh, unbelieving, now I have to say this: that um, no matter how much power and strength." wisdom and, and, and intelligence and, and scriptural knowledge and Bible study we do we're ignorant you know we're sitting here and we're gathered together and we're going through the word and we're trying to get an understanding of what's going on but you say well and somebody wants to ask you well Wayne well how much do you really think you know I'd say one percent or one percent because you're talking about spiritual things. And the scripture tells us that, that we are looking through a glass darkly. I, I can't even really see the real issues. All I can do is go upon what Jesus says. Jesus says, I am the way. I am the truth. And I am the light. So because Jesus has and understands. He goes, I came from the Father. I know how this stuff works. Amen. you got to believe me. Jesus has experience that I cannot identify with. You know, it's once again, it's like if you were to tell a child, you can't eat cookies and ice cream and candy all day. The child at its level, at five, six years old, can't understand why. I enjoy this food. This food tastes great. It makes me happy and it makes me smile. How come I can't eat it all day long? Mm -hmm. Now, you as the adult have experience. Mm -hmm. You have been places and have seen things and have understanding that this child cannot, at this particular time in its life, cannot comprehend. It can't comprehend vitamin B12 and vitamin 
D3 and, mm -hmm. and, 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 and bone structure and growth and protein. It ain't, it ain't all it cares about is what it tastes good and, or, you know, and, and so forth and so on. But your experience helps. So if the child listens to you because you're the parent and said, well, mama said this is good, so I'm going to eat it. The child will get the benefit even though they don't understand. But yet the child can go out and tell another child, my mama said carrots is good. You know? And that's, that's a good statement. Now, they don't really, they can't get to the chemistry. They can't do all that. Well, Jesus is our, our Lord. He, he is our God. He has, the, he has the understanding that we cannot have. So therefore, that's why we have to believe and trust God by what? Faith. faith. The scripture plainly says, without faith, faith it is impossible. impossible. It didn't say difficult. It didn't say very hard. It didn't, seem, it didn't say extremely rare. It said impossible. So if you don't have the if you don't have faith in God, and not not saying we learn and we develop and we and we grow, but we still can't act and trust and do on knowledge and on know-how and on personal skill. We still have to go on what? On faith. Because even your personal skill is what? Developed through what? Your trust in who? In God. Yes, Mark. It also says that uh, faith without works is dead mm -hmm. and counts for nothing and less than nothing. Mm -hmm. So they go kind of like hand you, in hand. You, gotta you have. can have faith all you want, but if you have no works, your faith is, faith is void. That's right. And that's what that book of James pointed out. The reality of what James is saying is if you have faith and you do nothing of it, you really don't have faith. Mm -hmm. you, you, you can say, I got faith. But like Mother said, but if you if you got faith, but you, you don't do no works based on your faith, mm -hmm. I don't think you got faith. And that's why a lot of people say, I believe in Jesus. But then you look at their works, you know, no. And that's falls under that line of taking the name of the Lord, what? In vain. Right? So they don't have it. So, it's, you know, what Mother's saying is true. It works. It's, it's a two-sided coin. Mm -hmm. If you got one, you got the other. Mm -hmm. If you got, because if I told you if I wrote you a check, I said, well, yeah, you know, God told me to write you a check for, for you know, $100,000. And I wrote every one of y'all a check for $100,000. And, uh, <laughs> well, see, he ain't got the faith, right? <laughs> he wouldn't cash it. He's like, I ain't cashing this check. I'm right. not. I ain't cashing this check. <laughs> you know why I ain't cashing it? Because I don't think he got that kind of money. If I told you God gave me some money and told me to write y'all a check, now somebody else is going to be like, well, you know what? I got little faith. I ain't sure, but I I, I kind of believe. I'm I'm going down there. I'm a I'm a cash it. That's that's. If you have the faith of a what the size of a mustard seed, you get the cash. You get the cash a check. But if you got if you don't believe it, and that's what Jesus is saying. If you don't believe what I do, what I say, then you won't act upon it. And if you do believe it, you will act upon it. And so even though this man don't know what to do, he he is doing what. He is doing an action. He, he brought his son to the disciples. And now when Jesus is coming, he brought his son to Jesus. Why? Because he's got powerful, wonderful faith? No. no. He, he's going to tell you in a, in a minute. I, I got faith, but I, got, I do believe. But help my unbelief. Mm -hmm. I believe on some points, and I'm confused and, don't, and, and doubt on other points. But all you need is a little. Amen. But look at what Jesus says here. But Jesus answered and said, Oh, unbelieving and perverse generation. Now, he's telling the truth. That, and, and that applies to us today. We're unbelieving. We're perverse in our generation. Right? How long will I be with you? And he's letting them know that from a natural standpoint, I won't be here that much longer. You're going to have to believe and trust in me. How long uh, will I tolerate you? Right? He's asking, he, he asks a question of to, to what degree will I tolerate not understanding from a standpoint of, 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 of not gaining any instruction, any 
not, not instruction, not gaining any growth through instruction. We have to begin to have what? Development. You can't be the same. Once again, we talked about the, 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 uh, the analogy of the little child. It's four years old. Well, and you explain to them they can't. Now, once the child gets 25, and they still talk about, I want, all I want is ice cream and cookies. Well, you're like, <laughs> okay, well, well, I mean, how long do we got to deal with this? I've been telling this, this child for 25 years that you can't eat ice cream and cookies all day long. All right? So, I mean, so how long do I tolerate you? So what he says, he says, bring here, uh, bring him here to me. Which to me is one of the greatest thing, statements uh, that, that Jesus can say. Bring him here to me. And that's what you do with problems like this. Mm -hmm. Here's the answer. You yeah, underline this. What do you do with this? This lunatic, this demon possessed, this problem person. Mm -hmm. What do you do? You bring him here to me. Mm -hmm. All right? right? It says, and they brought the boy to him. Yet, still approaching him and seeing him, immediately the demon spirit burst out in him. So the minute you try to bring him to Jesus, expect problems and difficulties to just start bubbling up. Mm -hmm. right. You can almost expect it to happen. And convulsing him, things seem like it's going to get worse. Mm -hmm. Now I'm bringing him to Jesus, now he's really acting up. Mm -hmm. And falling on the ground. All right. I'm thinking I'm bringing him to Jesus so he can get higher, and he's actually doing what? Right now, he's going lower. Mm -hmm. But you keep doing what? Bringing him to Jesus. You, you can't look at the things that are seen, but the things which are unseen. It's not the natural that you see, but it's the spiritual. Physically, he's going on the ground. But spiritually, he's about to be lifted. Amen. He rolled, foaming at the, uh, at the mouth. Things going to come out of his mouth that you were like, I, I can't believe this stuff is coming out of his mouth. I can't believe what, what he's saying and thinking. Don't worry about that. His spirit is about to be what? About to be lifted. And he questioned the father. How long a time has it been that this has happened to him? And he said, from his beginning, a little boy. From his being a little boy. Um, you say, well, my goodness, how can a, what can a little boy do that can, that can bring in a demon like that? Um... My initial answer is I don't have the answer to this particular question. I don't know. Mm -hmm. uh, but, um, but I will tell you this. Um, you have to be careful what you allow your children to be around. Amen. That's the one thing I would just add to that. Um, the scripture doesn't give us any uh, answer to that question as far as what it was. We just know that when it was, from the time he was a little boy. But well, when you read other scripture, you begin to recognize that it is important to recognize to whom you have uh, things around. Plus, you as a child, you as a, as a parent, be careful for what you do because a lot of things can be, uh, uh, can be, be passed on and traits and things like that. Uh, we'll see a lot of that when we get into the Old Testament. Amen. You're absolutely right. I'm looking at uh, uh, the word perverted here. Mm -hmm. And it's telling me that the word perverted means... To be turned from what is right, wicked, misguided, and distorted. And as you're saying, you know, you have to be careful who and what your children are around. Mm -hmm. There is, this is indeed, as you said, a wicked, exceedingly wicked, and perverse generation. Mm -hmm. In fact, it is the last, I mm -hmm. do believe, because the Bible said the last days. So, I mean, and evil and wickedness has truly run amok. Mm -hmm. And Satan is out there well, as a raging lion mm -hmm. trying to get anything and everybody mm -hmm. it possibly can because it wants everything in hell. Mm -hmm. So if you're not, as you said, if you're not watching your child and monitoring what they're reading and what they're seeing on TV and the activities on the internet and, mm -hmm. and the friends they're hanging with and the kind of crap they're reading, mm -hmm. I mean, it's a big job. Mm -hmm. But these things pervert the mind. Yeah. You're right, mother. You're right. But sometimes it's from two different generations. Because if you have a mother that's with father raised, had, doing good, you know, you have some bad apples, and then you have a child that don't have a father and that have a mother structure in the house, yep. and that child has that dad behavior, 
how do you deal with that? Because that's what I'm dealing with my son. Mm -hmm. Like I was raised with my mom and dad 24 hours around the clock. I just scream and holler and say, Dad, you here. But my son, dad wasn't raised with his dad. And it's like my son has his dad behavior. Sometimes I want to go and choke him. Mm -hmm. And I said, I can't do that because I'm a child of God. Mm -hmm. I got to turn things around. Right. Well, the thing with situations like that is that even when you go back and look at it, the one thing you can't do, you can't change it. So, yeah. so reminiscing on, on, on what caused it once it has happened uh, doesn't always bring you bring a solution. What that will tell you is for future, you tell your kids, you know, this is what happened to uncle so-and-so, this is what happened to aunt so-and-so. Don't allow your children to be, but from that standpoint, you just got to do just what this, what he said, what Jesus said, bring him to me. To me. Yeah, that's about the best answer I can, bring him to, to Jesus. Mm -hmm. and, um, and, and that is one of those things that um, you just have to allow the, 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 the as you can say, when, when the man is bringing the son to Jesus, the man, the boy is looking like he's getting what? Worse. So, so, and that's where faith kicks in because you can because you can quit. You could be like, you know what? I, I'm I'm doing all this. I'm bringing the, my child, my, my my situation to to Jesus, and and it's getting worse. And you could just you can just be like, wow. And you be, but yet you're right there. You you're where you need to be. So that's why you can't. You can't walk by sight. You have to walk by faith. faith. Uh, and, and you can't get discouraged. And here's another part. When you do bring them to Jesus, there's another scripture you can attach to that. Cast your cares on me because I care for you. And he says, and, uh, and he goes, and, and take my yoke upon you. For my, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So he lifts the stress. He said, let me carry this. Because you wear yourself out, mm -hmm. uh, and, and you say, "Well, am I supposed to not care?" I'm not, I'm not saying don't you, you care. You do care, but you can't. You got to find a way to ask God to help me as I bring my situation to you. Help me to be relieved of the panic. Because we, I mean, yes, when you talk about especially family members and close family, you can you can become to get panic, but you got to be like, you know what? Is God's hand short? When did God get weak? And when did God get, get, get confused? And when did God forget? And when did God not know? So therefore, uh, I'm going to have to find a way, because the issue then is my faith in God. Not God's strength. Right? I mean, you could look at uh, uh, Jacob when, when Joseph was, you know, when Joseph was sold. Jacob was like, oh, my son Joseph is what? Dead. Because he saw the bloody, you know, they brought to him back the bloody, the bloody, bloody cloth. And then uh, when the boys went down there to get the food during the famine, and Joseph was down there, and he kept Simeon. And the boys came back, and they didn't have Simeon. And told him, the man told him, we can't go back unless we bring who? Unless we bring Benjamin with him. So Jacob was like, what is going on? Not realizing that this is the, you're about to have the greatest joy of your life. The son that you thought was dead is alive. You're not going to be, be uh, suffering from the famine. Uh, you're going to be taken care of. But from his standpoint of what he can see, how he saw it, when he's looking at the circumstances, he was like, it can't get no worse than this. But really, it really was, was getting better every day. But it's hard for us to see it when we're seeing it from our level. That's why we got to walk by faith, faith not, not by sight. sight. Mother, did you want to say something? Uh, yeah, looking at uh, the statement that you said, bring him to me. Uh, to elaborate on that statement, uh, the Messiah is not physically in the body walking with us today that we can, you know, like this crowd, mm -hmm. run, up, run up to him and, and ask something. Right. So, and I'm looking at, in the absence of that being, what would the uh, mind, the mind that doesn't study pretty much the way we do, think about that? If you take, say to someone in, in, in the church, 
uh, bring so and so to me. Uh, they would say, well, where is me and where is that and where should I go? Right. Because Practicality. I don't know. Right. That's what a, 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 the mind would think. So I, I'm thinking on the terms of when he says, bring someone to me, I'm believing that he's saying, bring them to my word. Mm -hmm. bring them to my message mm -hmm. since they call him in the beginning Lord and teacher mm -hmm. bring him to my teachings mm -hmm. and having worked in the city of New York for 35 years with you know social services I have seen it all single parent households either father or mother raising sometimes grandparent raising mm -hmm. so the child has no uh, father figure mm -hmm. or mother figure if it's females and all these things create certain psychological issues. Mm -hmm. So I'm looking at, you know, those people who bring their, begin to bring their children to positive things. Mm -hmm. You know, things that they know that they will probably get some sense of self, mm -hmm. of who God is, of who Christ is. You know, and as they receive the light, and the light, I translate that word into the light that causes your mind to begin to perceive that you're right, you know, I don't have to think negatively about myself. I don't have to feel bad that I don't have, you know, a father and a mother and a house and our family has a car and we've got all, you try to see yourself as who you actually are in relationship to Christ himself. That way as you begin to gain light and wisdom of the words of the Bible, you begin to gain a certain amount of self-esteem wherein you don't have to allow any kind of devil spirit into your mind to, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. To direct you in a direction that you you, you just don't need to go. Mm -hmm. There's a lot to that, but you know. Well, I, I, I thank God for that because that's a, that's a very true statement. Um, because the battle is, is where? In the mind. Mm -hmm. That's where it's going. Because see, when, you, when, we, when we die, where does the body go? body goes back to the dust mm -hmm. so the body the, the battle is in the mind the, the, you as a man thinketh so is he, so is he. Uh, the, 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 the concepts of who you are is how you view yourself from a, a thought uh, perspective and faith itself faith is active and works through what through your your mind of being able to recognize and, and comprehend certain things. So, like she said, um, you know, when you, you look at a situation like, uh, um, you know, what Mary is talking about, you you have to find a way to bring to the mind things that equate what Jesus is saying. And you do start with with the uh, the, the word. Um, and you say, well, I'm I'm going through. I'm suffering. But this is why you need to know. So did Jesus. People on people. People don't treat me right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but that's that's okay. Right, you still right in line with Jesus. Mm -hmm. well, well, people misunderstand me. Well, guess what? You're right in line with Jesus. Um, you know, and you can you, we can, can go on and on. Now, if you if you can be in line with Jesus with that, then also be in line with Jesus where where it came a point where he said, "My hour has what has mm -hmm. come." So, your hour will come. All right. If you go back to that statement, to the, to the, to the analogy I gave you even about, about Jacob. The hour came when Jacob began to know that Joseph was what? Still alive. And then everything just what? Was better. So, it's how you see. See, uh, I mean, uh, I, I thank God for that, Mother, because that, that helps bring that, it ties us in. Because when Jacob was thinking that his, his son, Joseph, was dead. Joseph, in the mind of Jacob, was what? Dead. But was Joseph actually dead? No. Uh -huh. But it didn't change anything as far as Jacob was concerned. As far as Jacob was concerned, my son is dead. Why? Because he's dead in my what? In my thinking. In my mind. Even though he was, there was no harm to him done, and he was, he was still alive. But how he perceived it in his mind caused him to have that anxiety and that frustration. And then he began to overprotect Benjamin. And then when the, bo when the, when the boys went, to, went to, to, uh, uh, to Joseph, not knowing who Joseph was, mm -hmm. in their mind, they're like, this man is just treating me. You know, why is he doing it? But 
Joseph knows what's going on. He knows they're not in really any harm. I'm trying to see are they going to treat Benjamin the same way they treated me. I'm just giving them a test. But in the minds of them, the, they think this man is out to get us. And now he's, he's going to do. So it's once again, it's, it's, that's where the battle is taking place. If we don't grasp it, that it's happening in that, in that realm and we're thinking that everything is physical, why? Because look at what's happening to this poor boy here. He's manifesting all these physical traits. He's foaming at the mouth, convulsing, rolling, throwing himself on the ground. But it's not the fault of the body. It's the fault of what's in the boy. That's controlling his what? His mind. So you got to make sure that we got to allow what this world has as the grip on the mind of any individual to switch. Can you switch it from thinking like the world to thinking like the spirit? And so Paul picked that up. What did Paul say? Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Renewing of your mind. Yes. And also we have to remember that when situations come, it's a test for us to show show let God show up in our lives. You know, so we gotta make sure we show the test. That's true. And and and, and we're gonna be tested at our at our at our strength and at our weakness. weakness. You're going to be tested. And you just got to know. I mean, when I read the scriptures, and I say, you know, the scriptures about not worrying, you know, I, I'm trying to absorb that because I, I'm, I'm a natural born worrier. <laughs> Y'all might not know that, but I, I, oh my, <laughs> you know, I can, I can, I can get there easy. It don't take much. Yeah. <laughs> can I get an amen? Amen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, uh, that's how I am so when I read that I'm absorbing that and I'm trying to put that into practice because I'm going to work tell me you know, that, that you know, he's with me he'll never forsake me and I look at the situation and so you know, and, and I thank God I've come a long ways you know there was times when you know I, well it ain't about me but I'm just saying <laughs> but to, you, you just gotta be able to know what it is that I gotta renew my mind on yeah. alright because it will it will work on you and work on you big time but th now here's the thing alright I just talked about me I guarantee you we just talked a moment here and I won't do that but we, we all got out the, what is it that you got to work on my All right, so those are so, things that we got to deal with. And then the law to work on the children. Yeah. 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 And that's the thing. You, you that, That's such a true statement, too. Yeah. Yeah. Is it so you many, You deal with you. Yeah, because so many times, so much, we think, we see in us through us. We don't see what God sees through them or through us. If we allow God to work on us and bring out all what, that he needs to bring out, our children, they'll start to call in lines. Mm -hmm. But that's hard. It, that's it's hard. hard. Because, because you want to fix it. We want to fix it. We want to fix it. I have to talk to myself so much. Because I, I was like, God, you gave me the kids to do. But they are God's children. And so was I. Mm -hmm. So I'm his responsibility. And mm -hmm. we have to stop trying to take his place. Right. That's true. I had to, two weeks ago, a week ago, mm -hmm. I went to my friend's house. And we had prayer. And he told me to pray. And I was praying. And I asked God to forgive me. Because I tried to take my kids and fix it. Mm -hmm. And the Lord said, no, you give them to me. They're mine. They're not yours. Mm -hmm. So I had to repent of that. And I asked God to help me with that. Because I tried to fix mm -hmm. everything with them. And he said, and we can. you give them to me. Yeah. And you worry about like you're saying, get you you get straight. Yeah. Right? You get in line. And I say, Lord, I'm so sorry that I tried to take your job because I can't do your job. Right, right. We mess it up. Yeah, sure. uh, yeah, we try to fix this area and that fall. Right. And, you, and then you run into this area mm -hmm. and that fall. And then the whole That's bottom falls out. Right. Right. So and I had to repent of that thing. That's right. That's so true. Right. And and those are things that uh, it takes 
once again, the scripture for us to come to that, that, that understanding. Um, so, I'm sorry to interrupt. So, we're only responsible for the one soul that we have within ourselves. Is, is, is you. Is you. That's right. When your, children you get, when your children get to accountability, age, mm -hmm. their sins are no longer on you. They are responsible and for And you're required to live before them right. as a God, like God has a yeah. required. Train them up. Yeah. And when you do start to work on yourself um, by, by uh, you know, coming to surrendering yourself to the Lord, then people see it. Yes. You know. mm -hmm. yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, yes. And your children will know it. Right. And they're so close to innocence. Yes. Mm -hmm. They'll pick it up before you would. Yeah. Mm -hmm. See, my because they're so closer to God. Right. We we move from God because right. we old and weary. Mm -hmm. But the kids are closer to the right. in relationship to God. They'll right. they'll sense your change. Right. Like, that's yeah. one of mommy the reasons. Mommy ain't upset are, like that. But they want to blame. Get mommy upset. Mm -hmm. That's one of mommy, the reasons scripture says train them mm -hmm. they don't know. Mm -hmm. no. I, I'm talking to me, not you. Right. I'm talking to me. Right. But you can listen. Yeah. Let's right. go, go to one of the words in this word. In, I, I, I seem to be focused on that. Bring him to me. Mm -hmm. Bring him to me. <laughs> now, look. I, I went to look up the word bring because with, 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 with the way we study, it's like we would study every single word mm -hmm. in that sentence. Mm -hmm. And then we would make a practical application as to what is meant by it and how does it relate to me. Right. So when I looked at bring, this book is a synonym fighter, and uh, synonymous to the word bring is to attract, allure, draw, and invite. So what he's doing is, what the Messiah is saying, he's mm -hmm. saying, invite them to come and listen to me, mm -hmm. to hear what I've got to say, mm -hmm. you know, to receive what I'm teaching. So it's like when you're drawing somebody out, you're trying to draw their spirit, you know, you're trying to attract their mind. Do all you can to allure, attract, invite, bring them to me, to mm -hmm. the word. That's right. I was just going to add what Mother says with, with the bring. Um, I'm, I'm going to try to give it to you how I, I just like the Lord is uh, laying it on my heart. We don't physically don't have to pick them up and bring them. In our, in our spirit, we bring them. Mm -hmm. But how we bring them to, to, to Jesus, we embody Jesus. And where we walk, we walk in the presence of Jesus. So we are always bringing them Jesus. You see what I'm saying? We don't have to say, yeah, 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 yeah. This is an invitation to Jesus. Go to Jesus. No, we are Jesus. This should be a peaceful, calm walk, mm. a calm invitation, an mm. invitation of love mm. that they would want to have Jesus. Mm. So, you know, to add on, to cap on to that bring, it's not like, oh, I'm going to bring you a glass of juice here. You know, take this juice. No. I am bringing you Jesus. So that means we have to work on us. Yeah. We have to fix us. Well, I mean, I, I, I will, that, that's just going to have to give me 10 minutes. Okay. <laughs> but no, this is good. This, these, are, these are great things, I think. But I want to, I want to uh, cap to that. Remember when Jesus said, um, if you, um, if you don't hate father or mother, if you love my father or mother more than me, you cannot be my disciple. Right. Now, what that means is that if you love your children, your wife, your husband more than me, that means I then can't teach you how to be a light to them. Because instead of coming to me, you're focusing on them. The reason why he said that, and in another phrase he would say, he says that you, you must, you, you must first hate father or mother. And he's not saying it from a standpoint of hate, but he's saying it from a standpoint of they have to be lesser than how you relate to me. Mm -hmm. And the reason why is because we get in the way, as we've already been, been discussing, but in order to really be a father, uh, in order to be a husband, in order to be a wife or a brother, you have to go to God. Because the way you think it should be is not the way it needs to be. For your husband, for your wife, for your child. 
you got to go where? To God. You can't go to, to the broad consensus of this world's thinking. That you should raise children like this. Let them, let them decide themselves whether they want to be a boy or a girl. You, 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 can't, you can't do that. That's the way they, 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 they're teaching. So you got to go to God first. And, and God tells you, God, this is what you should be. Now, I'm going to God not to tell God how you do this for my children. I'm going to God to say, God, how do I be a father? See, not how, not, see, it's not, it's not, I'm not ricocheting, pointing to God to hit you. No, I'm pointing to God so God can hit me and tell me how to relate to you. Tell me how to relate to my wife. See, cause, cause quite often, I'm, you know, the husband often is like, you got to do this, you need to do this, and you need to do that. And I was like, and that cre creates what? Pretend. Then we get spiritual. We're like, okay, all right, you know, we get a little deep. And then we go, okay, I'm going to God about you. And then we go, ping, ping, we shoot the ricochet. Now we feel a little more, what, spiritual, because we are now equating who in the picture? God. God. But we're still doing what? We're aiming at God, but we're aiming at an angle so we'll come down and hit the husband or hit the wife. And that ain't it. So I got to go to God and say, God, I'm hitting you about how I should deal with this. So then God's saying, that's right, because the only one to whom God can relate to in your world about your situations is who? You. So then God tells me, well, this is what you should do. This is what you, you know, you should go do these things and do these things. And, and, and God's telling me how to act in my relationship. That's that whole aspect of teaching, calling him Lord and teaching and all that. All of that is part of that. And that's what the Lord is trying to get them to see. And they're their unbelief is because in their mind they don't think it's what? It's, it's, it's possible. I can't understand it. I, I administered the formula. And I'm not, I wasn't there. But if you were to say, well, Wayne, why do you think the disciples could not cast this demon out of this boy? My, uh, my, my, my synopsis would be, I think they, they thought they could do the same formula. We did this when Jesus sent us out two by two. This is what we did. This guy came and I ran the same script. I ran the same formula. And it what? It didn't work. So you're running a formula. That's what the faith people teach. That if you just say the right what, words, that you're going to get what you want. And you still, no matter what comes, even though it looks the same, in all thy ways, what? Acknowledge him. So I'm thinking, they didn't acknowledge him. They thought... I know how to do it. Oh, I know. I know how to cast out devils. I did. It. You should have seen us. And they came. Remember, they came back. What? Rejoicing, right? Mm -hmm. They came back yeah. rejoicing that the devils. And Jesus gave them a warning. He said, "Don't rejoice that the devils are subject to you, but rejoice that your what? Your name is written." Right. So I would think that they already got. You know, I got my degree. You know, devil cast out university. You know, that I I know how to do this. Right, I already got my degree on the wall. So when this man came with the with the boy, oh, we got a, my son. He's oh, bring him on, bring him on. Yes, he's in my my degree. I'm a I'm a devil cast out ologist, you know. And, and you know, and then you end up not being able to do anything because you're trusting in what your what, what your own abilities were, and not every situation bring it to God. Now, with that being said, how guilty are we of that? Right? So I mean. Okay, we've been sitting here talking, so obviously we're talking. We're breathing in what air? Air. Mm -hmm. right. We just that's just the way it's supposed to be. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, okay, I, I'm grant you that, but still, I don't control it. I don't. I'm not the one that's keeping the planet going around. Mm -hmm. The sun. We got. So in every breath, if we really think about it, it should be. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Every drop of sun that we feel should be a what? Thank you, Jesus. Because I, I, I don't have the control to turn off the turn on the sun, turn off the sun. I don't control that. Who controls that? God. God. I'm not the one that's keeping the planets going and the universe in place. I'm not the one that's keeping the atoms, you know, with the strong force of the nuclear uh, force and we I'm not the one doing that. So when I when I pick up my cup and the cup stays solid and the coffee and I can drink everything. 
See, but we get comfortable because we I know how to do this. Mm -hmm. right? So we, that's what we have to watch. And so in the absence of giving a narrative as to what happened with the disciples, I would infuse that because that's just my thinking, not that it's the way, but I think it makes scriptural sense because we do that so often. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm a disciple of Jesus. Of course I'm not a cast a demon. I bring the boy here. But look at what happened. Can we finish this real quick? I'm sorry, I didn't, I didn't, didn't mean to take y'all so long, but we're going we gonna to try to, since we, <laughs> since we got this far, we might as well go on. Go on. <laughs> so he said, <laughs> huh? I know, I know. I'm trying to get out of here. So he said. So he says. Uh, and he he asked the question. How well, how long has he has this happened to him? And he said, "From a little boy." All right, we talked about that. But if you are able, help us. This is what the boy the, the the boy's father says. If you are able, help us. Have compassion on us. And Jesus said to the, to him, "If you are able to believe." All things are possible to, to the one who believes. Now, what Jesus is letting him know that, number one, why is, why is there nothing impossible? Because of what the man believes, or is it what he believes on? It's what he believes on. If you believe in Jesus, is there anything too hard for God? So that means there's nothing impossible. All right. So he's letting him know. That he's saying... There is nothing impossible right, to them that believe. And immediately crying, the father of the child said, I believe, help my unbelief. Can't have a more honest statement than that. Mm -hmm. The reason why I'm bringing him to you is because I believe. But I'm also confused. I'm, 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 I don't know. I don't have a full comprehension as to what's going on. I'm ignorant of certain things. I believe, but I also got a lot of unbelief. I got a lot of, and so he says, but, but help my unbelief. The man confessed. I do believe, but I got a lot of unbelief. But sometimes we got the Lord, I know I'm going to do this and I'm going to do this. And I, I believe my son is going to have this and that. But Lord, help me to stand strong on the belief that you got this. That's the hard part sometimes for us because we want to put our finger in it. And seeing the crowd. Uh, ran together. Jesus rebuked the unclean spirit, saying to it, dumb and deaf spirit. And there's a lot I can say about the dumb and deaf spirit because remember, the spirits were supposed to, he would ask the spirit, what's your name? And when the, when the person couldn't speak, they were like, well, you can't cast a demon out if the demon don't call, because that's the formula they had. But because he was a dumb spirit, he didn't speak anything, so they couldn't run the formula that they used back in those, in those days when Jesus said, when I, if I cast out a demon, and then you call me a devil. Well, when your sons cast them out, by whom do they cast them out? Well, they were using that, that formula. But the, pr the process they used was they would ask the demon the name. Wow. When, and this is the second time Jesus did this. When he cast out a demon from a person that could not speak. The, what, the demon would not allow them to speak. So therefore, how do you use, what formula do you use if, the, if you can't get the demon's name? How do you cast them out? Power of God. Dumb. And death spirit, I charge you. Who's speaking here? Jesus. And with, uh, I, I, I charge you, uh, come out of him, and you will not enter into him again. He was given instructions. You come out and don't come back. And with crying and much convulsion, Jesus rebuked it. So look, look at that. It wasn't a willy. Look at how some people fight against Jesus. When I say people, I'm speaking of the spiritual aspect. How certain entities. The devil does not care. He's fighting. But yet, at the same time, he's got to obey. Amen. Jesus rebuked it, and the devil came, and the demon came out of him. And he became as if dead. So many said, he is dead. So they say, well, you know what? The devil came out, but it only came out because the boy died. Die. All right, and so they're already ready to make that argument. But holding his hand, Jesus raised him and, and, uh, and he stood up. So Jesus grabbed him by the hand, stood him up, and he healed the boy. Now you say, well, didn't he already cast the demon out. But like we said, well, why did the boy have the demon as the little boy anyway? I don't know. 
And I, and I would attach this statement to that. Jesus healed him. That's why he told the demon to come out. But also what? He Don't come back. Mm -hmm. And then he said to the boy, when he raised the boy up, when he was as dead, he what? He healed him. So whatever it was that gave access, I believe it no longer exists. He healed him. And gave him back to his father. All right? And the, and the boy was cured from that hour. And all were what? Amazed at the greatness of God. All right? And that's a lot of times what you will see. All were amazed. That whole crowd was amazed at the greatness of God. There's a lot of people that are, that are amazed at how God can do things. They can say, oh, look at the beautiful river. Look at the beautiful. They're amazed at the beauty of God. That don't mean that they what? They know Jesus. Always got to watch out for that. A lot, of, a lot of people say some very wonderful things and godly things, but still don't know Jesus. We'll talk about that in another time. We won't, we won't elaborate on that tonight, today. And while all were wondering at all things which he, Jesus did, and entering into the house, the disciples came to Jesus and inquired of him privately and said, Why were we not able to cast it out? Right. And I already talked about that, right? Mm -hmm. They they got the, the they went to the demon cast out university, got their degree, they figured they knew how to do it. And now all of a sudden they recognize I, I re we really don't. Just because you did it last week don't mean that you, you don't have to trust God this week. We always gotta trust the Lord. But then he elaborates on some other things. So he does give them some answers. Look what he says. And he said to them. Because of your what? Little faith. So what does that mean? Yeah. That you, you didn't have faith in the right what? Right. In the right person. Exactly. You had faith in your, I did it before. Mm -hmm. I know how to do it. When you have confidence, when you have com faith, it, confidence in yourself, self-confidence, mm -hmm. about spiritual things, that belongs to God. Mm -hmm. You have to trust God for things like that. For truly I say unto you, if you have faith as a mustard seed. And now remember, what he says, if you have faith, faith is always faith in what? Word. And faith in God. In God in it has to be faith. Because it was Frederick Price that said, when it says have faith in God. And I sat there and watched the TV and I was like, hmm. He said, it's not have faith in God. What it should be is have the faith in of God. So have the use the same kind of faith that God used. So he put faith as an entity, as a tool that God uses. Mm -hmm. And if you find the same tool, you can do what God does. Mm -hmm. That's what he taught. And I remember going, hmm, I don't know about that. And that was years ago. And I, I, I never forgot it though, because what that shows me, that's how people believe. They don't have faith in God. They have I want to have the faith. faith of God. Right. And use faith like like God uses it, and I don't really need God if I have God kind of faith. Mm -hmm. So they really they, they want to be their what own God. God. Then they, be, God. they want the power. They want to, I want to be like. God. But don't that sound familiar? Mm -hmm. Who's that? That's a Satan. Satan. Mm -hmm. All right, and we can elaborate on that, but I won't because we're gonna we got to get out of here. It says, and if <laughs> if you have the faith. As a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move. So what they're saying is that God can do anything. So, But you got to have faith in God. And nothing will be impossible to you. All right? So that means that if you are trusting in God, that means if God needs you to move a mountain, guess what he will do? He will, it will move. He will allow you to, to allow it to happen. But it's got to be lined up with God. If, 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 if you being God and God being you, you can ask what you want, what you will. But you got to be in God and God's got to be in you. So that means your wills are what? Aligned. A lot of times we ask things that are totally out of line with what God wants. So therefore you, you pray about it and you don't get it. That's what James said again. He goes, you pray and ask and miss because you're praying to, to, to just uh, uh, embellish yourself. But this kind is not uh, uh, able to come out except in what? Prayer and fasting. That means in communication with God and the fasting 
doesn't doesn't uh, persistently mean just denying of food, but it means denying of what? The spirit. The, the flesh. The flesh. Denying of the flesh. Trusting in the what? The spirit, the spirit of God. So, and without communication with God, talking to God, because he is what? Lord. And then fasting, continuously trusting on him for your nourishment and your understanding He's the one that will teach you. Like the man called him in the beginning. My Lord, Lord, and what? Teacher. Teacher. Right? So, fasting and prayer. Let the, let the Lord show you the way. Alright, we're done. Any other comments? This is a preachable moment. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you're supposed to put your... uh, okay. We ain't gonna go there. Come on, brother. Give us a word of prayer to go home with. Yeah.